somebody is is dying and they know they're dying um, how can we not only help them have the death that they want but also how can we help ourselves hold the grief once that death has taken place and the most natural thing in the world for myself and, and, and my family was to actually hold that person close to us we held on to not only held on to our mother but we held on to our grief and we were able to work through it each day in a very a very gentle very normal way by refreshing the vases of daffodils by saying good morning to her by sitting and talking and i suppose we could conjure up all sorts of images we could conjure up all sorts of philosophy about birth and life and death um, but when it came to being with my mother and being with my mother's body and her soul, uh, choosing a, a favourite outfit, making sure her hair was combed, it just felt like the most natural thing in the world. So I was with my auntie when she died. She died in a nursing home. And we asked the funeral director to bring her body back to our home. And that seemed like the obvious place because that's where all our other relatives had died. So he brought her back and laid her on the bed and that's where she stayed until her funeral, which was four days later. And that time was really important to me. And I think I can remember that the first day we were all making cups of tea and we were all around and I, was, I went through to find out what she wanted and of course she didn't need anything. On the second day, less so. And then on the third day I went into the room and I just knew she was dead. And that is the only way I can describe it. And really for, for me it felt, it sounds strange, but it felt like we kept each other company while she worked out she was dead and while I worked out she was dead and it was a beautiful time I have beautiful memories of that time but after she died her body was taken to the first of all to the hospital mortuary and then picked up by the undertaker and taken to to the undertaker's premises I wasn't even sure where that was to be honest um, somewhere in Edinburgh so suddenly there was this realization that she, I felt that she needed to come home to, to basically be laid on the bed in the coffin um, in, in her bedroom. And, and that's what happened. It was, it was relatively, it was very easy to do. We just rang the undertaker and said, we'd like this to happen. So it was, it was a very graceful thing. It was a, it was a, there was a sweetness about it. It was one of the last things that it could do for my dad, and I think it was it was really important to be able to spend a lot of time with him afterwards, especially when it's a sudden death. You don't want to let go, so why should you? You know, why should you have to be? You shouldn't have to let go straight away. You should give yourself time. Yeah. My sister was the same. She didn't want to. She didn't want to. She didn't want to, to actually even look at my dad. She didn't want to see him. She was really upset and really she was scared because she hadn't. She hadn't been a. She never seen a dead body, and seeing a dead body is bad enough. But to be faced with your father, so it took a little while to talk. You know, talk her around, and but she was relieved. I remember her saying, she said, I'm just so relieved because if I hadn't done this, I'd have always wondered. I guess I feel like I never got to say what you wanted to say. There's so many other things going on. You're thinking you have to leave because the doctors have to come in. You have to, she has to be taken away somewhere because you don't know what's going to happen. And that was way before I did my nursing, so I know now that, you know, she wasn't going to start smelling after two hours or, you know, that sort of thing. And certainly for me, with what I went through, I always say um, to my patients and also to my patients' family that, you know, when it happens, that when they pass, you know, you don't have to rush and organise things.
it felt sitting there with Jimmy uh, like we were honoring him and it was a very uh, it was a very beautiful experience to have we sat and played cards next to his body and it could have been deemed to be irreverent but um, I think there's quite a difference between being irreverent and being disrespectful. Death is a serious business, but we don't have to take it too seriously. It was very beautiful that he died in the early hours of the morning. And when we all went across, um, you know, the house was just totally radiant with light. I think, I mean, to be honest, it's, uh, it's absolutely uh, uh, strange and an extraordinary thing to have your, your, your father suddenly lying there cold and quiet and he's not there, but he's there or something, you know? And to, to wash his body and to prepare him and to, we dressed him in his favourite clothes it was just enormously special. I think that having them, having bodies at home is essential for your own health. A lot of traditions that people frown on now are really good to get over grief. You know, you can stroke the lock of hair. You can still feel in touch. I know it's silly, you're not in touch, but in a sense you are. It's having those last possible moments you can with the actual body. You know it's just a shell, but it doesn't matter. That shell's embodied all that you love in life about this person.